know you wanna party with a fat bitch. Hello everyone, before we start today's video, if you could all do me a solid and lightly tap the like button, perhaps share the video about and leave a comment. If you are not subscribed, subscribe as well. It would greatly help this channel. Thank you very much. Just fantastic. Captain's Log, Subdates 22121 4.8. On the 14th day of Moistmas, my whole crew gave to me an expired N word pass, a hemp bag, and a serrated pencil with a drawstring. Oh, wait, it's a strimmer. They gave me a strimmer. Every so often on Twitter, I see videos shared via TikTok. These videos invariably end up being, well, clowned on because people on TikTok will say things that either are akin to that of a hypocrisy, or potentially that of science denial. Jeffrey Marsh is the person we're going to talk about today, because there are times while Jeffrey Marsh is seen as a bit of a champion for trans people, Jeffrey Marsh will go out of Jeffrey Marsh's way to tout espouse ideas that can only be considered a form of science denial. And there's a valid point here, I'll get to it, don't worry, when you know your argument has no leg to stand on because there's no scientific merit and or basis, you will seek to undermine the very thing that everyone else latches onto as validation for truth, or as close to that of truth as you can get. Rarely in science do you confirm fact, you mostly confirm that a theory is more often truthful or close to truth. So you could, for example, hypothesize whether or not Jeffrey Marsh is human. I would argue not. Mannerisms, body gestures are akin to that of C-3PO, perhaps the speech pattern as well if it were not so condescending. To best demonstrate my points, I am going to play some videos from Jeffrey Marsh's TikTok, and we can all work out together whether or not Jeffrey Marsh holds a form of double standard hypocrisy, stupidity, idiocy, moronicness, and so on. Well, you're gonna make me cry. <laughs> Um, it's very clear that you as a parent are trying so hard. And for all the parents watching, you do not need to get the pronouns right. You don't need to get the labels right. You just need to get your heart right. Oh, balancing that audio is a ball lake. Now, there's a reason I've shown this clip first. It's because later on, Jeffrey Marsh put out another video that piqued my interest. Stop telling trans people that we're inspirational. I mean, it's fine, it's a lovely compliment, but you do realize we should live in a world where we do not have to be inspirational for you. Where we do not have to have the crappiest life that we almost do not survive, and then transcend that, and then be an inspiration to you. Do I need to play the first video again? Now granted, in that first video that is, Jeffrey doesn't actually verbally take the credit, doesn't really run with that, merely complimenting the parents on supporting their child. Many in the comments do that, and so it's understandable perhaps that if someone leaves a comment maybe patting themselves on the back, Jeffrey might react. But I'm not going to deny, playing those two side by side, or back to back, is amusing. They are also not that far apart in release date. Now on to the next videos. Now these three I dubbed Science Denier 1, 2, and 3. You'll understand why once we get into the first one. I'm not even sure we'll need the third one, but the third one is what I saw originally tweeted out by someone else. Some bald emo guy with a beanie. Biological sex is fake. And we're off to the races. Jeffrey Marsh leading by a furlong. Yes, we all know that gender roles are fake, but do not say to a trans person, biologically male, born female. You do realize there are some contexts where that is relevant, medically, legally, right? You do realize this isn't all just about expression and the gender role thing. Ah, uh, it existed for a while. It's not necessarily that it was fake. It's that it's become less important. Those roles were determined centuries ago after all by the Supreme Leader. You might know him. He wears a blue coat, very long beard, yellow hat, yellow boots, sing songs. Ever heard of him? Tom Bombadil? <laughs> male bodied. No, 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 no. But some people do have male bodies. 
Some have female bodies. Some have very androgynous bodies. Some have faces when they smile that look like horses. Some look like miserable gits. And if they're female, miserable cowbags. <laughs> It's hard to take you seriously, especially when you start with such a banger of a sentence. There is no biological criteria for gender that is both universal and a binary in human beings. Where does that leave us? Free. I don't suppose you think we need to take either the red pill or the blue pill, do we? Also, scientific basis for gender, you're right, gender is a social construct. That's why children in the 15th century, boy or girl, were called girl, not a joke. The biological aspect that determined the differences was because to be male means to have certain chromosome differences. The more notable one being Y. Don't suppose you know what that is, do you? Now that chromosome, along with other key differences, make them stronger, more muscular, and of course, because of that, and to quote, the alpha male of all time, the cream rises to the top. <laughs> Hello, I want to talk to you about science and gender. Yay, I'm about to get my edumacation on. Teach me, Jeff Pye, teach me. Some youths are playing basketball a little ways away. I hope this will work. Everyone says there are only two genders, it's science, and I wanted to deepen that conversation. I'm non-binary. Everyone keeps saying there are two genders. Some do, yes. There is quite a large number of those who are more conservative-leaning who certainly say it. I've always took the position of, you can say whatever gender you want to be, I couldn't care less. But if you want to conflate that with biological sex, we have a disagreement. Biologically, there are two. There is the argument of hermaphrodite or intersex, which typically describes a rather rare individual born with both male or female genitalia. Many of those born with both end up having surgery to remove the one that might be causing them health problems. It's also possible that that person does not visually pass off as male or female. I know the word anomaly gets thrown around as well, but it is considered insensitive and I will not use it to describe another person. It is important though to acknowledge these vital differences in biological sex. There are only two. And I get it, you look like a man. I, I understand, we're pausing that for a moment. I'm non-binary and when it comes to science, most people who are saying it's science, there are only two genders, they have not thought about science since 12th grade. Just in case you're curious, grade 12, because it's not something we use in the United Kingdom, is year 13, age 17 to 18, a senior in high school. Over here when I was young boy, it was called secondary school and then college for 17 to 18 year olds, you whippersnappers, you're all the same to me. And I know I've overlooked the fact that Jeffrey Marsh identifies as non-binary. He is yet to make a relevant point that would have me question non-binary because I don't care enough to do it. I accept anyone that identifies as such. That might seem like a uh, non-point, but I don't want to be accused of being intolerant towards those that identify as such, because it takes away from the actual point of conflating gender and sex and science denial. They're not, they're not enthusiastic about science. They're not reading the books. They're not scientists. Hi, proud member of the Royal Society of Chemistry for, well, close to 15 years. Um, got a background in science, in fact. Went to university, studied chemistry and comp sci. D does um, my lack of wanting to read books outside of science fiction make me um, unenthusiastic, by chance? Or is this the wrong science when it suits you? And they're using science as a bucket. So the bucket's labeled science, and in that bucket goes, I find LGBTQ people gross. Mm. I, uh, men are better than women, and I don't want anything to challenge that hierarchy. Bloop, goes in the bucket, right? I assume these are pulled out of your bottom, because I'd love to know who says that. I would love to have a conversation with someone who actually says that, genuinely. Because people who say that are typically relics, and you don't see many of those around here anymore, and there's certainly not many of them on the internet. Mostly because they think they have to use some weird little round device phone to call an operator to be put through to the internet. And the bucket is labeled science and you use that against trans and non-binary people. 
You don't suppose it's because you've put trans and non-binary together and others identify as trans non-binary. Trans has a medical term, gender dysphoria. Non-binary does not. There is no scientific backing for non-binary yet. Psychologically, more work and research needs to be done to understand that. But gender dysphoria is very much known, diagnosed and treated. In some instances, many in fact, wrongly. The UK had an issue with a place called Tavistock. They completely cocked it up one too many times with children who invariably changed their minds. But here's the thing. Science describes what is. Most human beings have a PP or a VV, but not all of them. Most human beings have an XX chromosomes or XY chromosomes, but not all of them. Ignoring the condescending factoid delivery there, I had to because of the lack of citation in the TikTok in question, look it up. Some people are born with different sex chromosomes from XX and XY. Some men have no Y chromosome. In fact, 1 in 20,000 men have no Y chromosome. Based on the sole criterion of production of reproductive cells, there are only two sexes. The female sex and the male sex. You inserted chromosomes as a means of saying, ah yes, but some don't have this and are still this or are different from this. You are conflating science, which is quite impressive. Biology to be more explicit on the scientific feel. It's impressive really when you stretch that hard. Additionally, there is a possibility to have an XXY chromosome, which is called Klinefelter syndrome, and it is not possible for a child to be born with YY chromosomes. I felt mad educational today. How wonderful. Let's play the last video so we can have some more fun. Do you remember this video? I was a controversy. <laughs> In the video, it's for kids, and I say there's no such thing as a boy or a girl. So we really have gone back to the 15th century then, have we? But could we perhaps change it from girl to... It. Come here, it. Do as it is told. It should be seen, not heard. And the funny thing is, I stand by that statement. But the right wing, the far right in the United States went absolutely over the edge and I was put through the mill and death threats and all of that sort of stuff. If the latter is true, I'm genuinely sorry that you received them, 100%. But to an extent, you've got to be happy, right? Because there's a win for you, more traffic your way, which many people consider a victory because then more will see your message and you can spread your message that you unapologetically don't believe children are boys or girls. Because all children are it. I don't want to take womanhood away from you if you're a woman. I don't want to take manhood away from you if you're a man. But I sure as heck want you to know that the structures, the strictures, the policing, the baggage, the everything that goes with those words is not real. You have a chance to expand your view and have freedom. And sure as heck, we should be teaching that to children. Lol, how about no? Mary Moistness, ew. <laughs> Maggie Moistness.